Hello and welcome to the last semi-final of the National Elections Quiz 2018. The National Elections Quiz exists for one and one reason alone. To reach out to young and future voters of our country in the age group of 14 to 17 years. Familiarize them with the Indian electoral process and prepare them to be informed and ethical voters of tomorrow. For voices to be heard in a democracy, one must vote in the elections. And this is the one message that the NEQ wants all of us to remember for life. 13.5 lakh students from 38,000 schools across India. This quiz has seen participants as diverse as India itself. After competing on three different levels, namely the intra-school, district and state level, we got our 36 teams for the semi-finals, fighting for a place in the national finals to be fought between only six teams. We have already received our finalists from the East, West, South, Northeast and Special Central Zones. And now we are more than excited to know which team from today's North Zone will join the others in the finals. The national champions of the NEQ 2018 will win a prize of rupees 1 lakh. First runners-up will win 80,000 rupees. And the second runners-up will win 60,000 rupees. The remaining three teams making it to the finals will be rewarded 50,000 rupees each. Since this is an inter-school quiz, half the amount shall go to the school and the rest shall be divided among the two students who comprise the winning teams. The semi-finals and the final are being held in New Delhi in collaboration with Rajya Sabha TV. So let's meet the participants for today's North Zone semi-final. First, we have the team from Chandigarh. Hello, my name is Ankush Goyat and my school's name is Government Model Senior Secondary School, Sector 16. Hi, my name is Ankur Goyat and I also study in Government Model Senior Secondary School, Sector 16, Chandigarh. Let's meet the team from Haryana. Hello friends, my name is Muskan Tyagi and I am from Aroi Model School from Panipat. Hello everyone, myself Minakshi, I am from Aroi Model School, uh, Panipat. Next we have the team from Himachal Pradesh. Hi, my name is Dimple Soni and I am from Government Girls Senior Secondary School, Sultanpur Kullu. Hello, my name is Neha and I am from Government Girls Senior Secondary School, Sultanpur Kullu. We'll welcome now the team from Jammu and Kashmir. My name is Zatul Khajuria, I am from Government High Secondary School, Parnala. Hi, I am Sonali Sihotra from Government Higher Secondary School, Palan, Kathua. Ab milte hai the team from Punjab. Hi, my name is Neha and I am from Senior Secondary School, Namashair, Punjab. Hello, Kusum, my name is Kusum. Uh, my school name is Papa Gola, Government Girl, Senior Secondary School, Namashair. And finally, we have the team from Uttarakhand. Hello, my name is Baljeshan. I read in Janta Inter College, Udham Chinnagar, Uttarakhand. Hello, my name is Krasant Kumar and I read at Janta Inter College, Rudhapur, Udham Senior. Welcome to all the teams. Now that we've met the teams, today we are at the semi-finals of the North Zone. Our six teams have reached after three rounds of intra-school, district and state level competition, where they were quizzed upon the Indian electoral process. So now for this zonal competition, we are going to take that difficulty level slightly further. We will test their knowledge on governance, the Indian polity, the constitution of India and broadly cover the journey of the Indian Republic with elections across the world. Let's now go through the rules for this very exciting quiz contest. We will have 25 questions in all. Initially, we will have 20 questions directed to the teams in order. Once the team hears the question, they will have 15 seconds to answer the question. If a team answers a direct question correctly, they will score 10 points. There is no negative score for wrong answers. In the event of a wrong answer or a pass, the other teams may use their buzzer and give me the right answer. Correct answer on the buzzer will fetch you 10 points. But a wrong answer here can now rob you of five points. So be careful when you use your buzzers. After this, we will have a quick buzzer round of only five questions. These are questions that are open to all teams. The fastest to press the buzzer can answer the question. And if they answer it correctly, they will get 10 points. But a wrong answer will fetch them minus five. Also remember, a team will get minus five points if they press the buzzer 
before I have completed the question. If this is clear with all the teams, yes, let's start the national elections quiz, North Zone semi-final. The first question is directed to the team from Chandigarh. The first election to use the voter verified paper audit trail or the VV Pact system was a by-election for the Noxen Assembly constituency in which Indian state? The first election to use VV Pact system. It is Nagaland. Nagaland. Nagaland is 10 points to Team Chandigarh. That is the right answer. Very well done. Good start. The Noxen Assembly constituency is in Nagaland. The next question is to the team from Haryana. Which present day iconic building that is associated with the Election Commission of India came into existence during the tenure of the Chief Election Commissioner S.P. Sen Verma on the 25th of January 1970? Which famous building is this which came into existence on the 25th of January 1970? It was during the tenure of the Chief Election Commissioner, S.P. Sen Verma. The time is up, Team Haryana, sorry. Teams on the buzzers, now. <laughs> Team from Chandigarh, you have pressed your buzzer. Can you give me your answer? CEO Museum, New Delhi. It is not the CEO Museum, minus five to the team from Chandigarh, but a good attempt anyway. The answer is the Nirvachan Sadan. The Nirvachan Sadan of the Election Commission of India was came into existence on the 25th of January 1970. We'll now move to the team from Himachal Pradesh. What is common to the election symbols of Samajwadi Party, Telugu Desam Party, National Panthers Party, Kerala Congress, Kerala Party, and the Manipur People's Party? What is common to that election symbol? The parties you can see are Samajwadi Party, Telugu Desam Party, National Panthers Party, Kerala Congress, Kerala, and Manipur People's Party. Lion. Lion? Lion is not the right answer. We'll now go to the teams on the buzzers now. The team from Jammu and Kashmir has buzzed. What is the right answer? Bicycle. Bicycle or cycle is the right answer. All these parties have the bicycle as a symbol. 10 points to the team from Jammu and Kashmir. And you also get the next question. Which 2017 film was selected as the Indian entry for best foreign language film at the 90th Academy Awards or Oscars? It deals with the story of a rookie government clerk on reserve who is sent on election duty to a town in the jungles of Chhattisgarh. This is a 2017 Indian movie, which is the entry for the best foreign language film at the Oscar Awards. The story of a government clerk who goes on election duty to Chhattisgarh. Name the movie. Newton. Newton is the right answer. 10 points to the team from Jammu and Kashmir. Very well done. Newton, India's entry to the Academy Awards 2018 is the right answer. Next the team from Punjab. What was used for the first time as an election regulatory mechanism in India in 1971? 1971, in the first time, Bharat, what was the first time in the first time in the Ballot box. Ballot box is not the right answer. Teams on the buzzers, now. The team from Jammu and Kashmir have pressed their buzzer. What is your answer? Model code of conduct. Model code of conduct, Adarsh Achar Sahita is correct. 10 points to the team from Jammu and Kashmir. We'll now go to the team from Uttarakhand. You will see a flag of a provisional government which was established in Singapore in 1943. It was supported by the Empire of Japan, by Nazi Germany, Italian Social Republic and those their allies. It was a part of a political movement which started in the 1940s outside India, 
with the purpose of allying with Axis powers to free India from British rule. What was this government called? You will see the flag of a provisional government which was first established in Singapore. पहली बार इस फ्लैग का इस्तेमाल सिंगापुर में हुआ था सपोर्ट उन्हें मिला था जापान नाजी जर्मनी इटालियन सोशल रिपब्लिक और अन्य एलाइज के साथ इस गवर्नमेंट का नाम बताइए भारतीय तिरंगा भारतीय तिरंगा इज नॉट द राइट आंसर टीम्स ऑन द बजर्स टीम फ्रॉम चंडीगढ़ इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस भी गलत जवाब माइनस फाइव टू द टीम फ्रॉम चंडीगढ़ This is the flag of the Arzi Hukumat Azad Hind, or simply Azad Hind. This Azad Hind ka flag hai. Jo government bani thi, it was called Azad Hind, headed by Netaji Bose. Next question to the team from Chandigarh. Which former first lady of the United States and the Democratic Party's nominee for 2016 U.S. presidential elections? During her visit to India in 2011 as Secretary of State, described Election Commission of India as the gold standard in election management worldwide. Do you have to tell me the name of the former first lady of the United States and the Democratic Party's oh. nominee who came to India in 2011? She is Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is correct. 10 points to the team from Chandigarh. That is the right answer. We will now go to the team from Haryana. You will see a symbol. You have to identify from that symbol the now defunct political party. The party does not exist anymore. It was established in 1977 and it was eventually merged with another party in 2013. Which political party symbol was this? This party existed between 77 and 2013. Team from Haryana. Which political party? Janta Party. Janta Party is the right answer. Ten points to the team from Haryana. Very well done on the direct. We'll now take a look at the scores. After eight questions, we have teams Uttarakhand, Punjab, and Himachal Pradesh yet to open their account, but it's still early in the game. Chandigarh and Haryana both on ten, and we have Jammu and Kashmir leading right now with thirty points. It's time for a short break but before that here's a question for you watching us Which authority conducts the elections to one the offices of the president vice president parliament and state assemblies and two local bodies like panchayat corporations and municipalities Is it A the election commission of India and state election commission or is it B Both are conducted by the Election Commission of India, or is it C, the State Election Commission and the Election Commission of India, or is it D, both conducted by the State Election Commission? SMS your answers to the number displayed on your screen. For example, if your answer is option A, SMS NEQ six space A, or if your answer is option B. SMS NEQ six space B. The first fifty correct answers will win exciting prizes from the Election Commission of India. To know about the winners of our episode one audience question, please visit the Election Commission of India website and Facebook page shown on your screens. Congratulations to all the winners. Welcome back from the break. For any assistance or information relating to the electoral process, dial the Election Commission of India's helpline number 1-800-11-1950. So let's get right back to testing our teams from the North Zone, starting with the team from Himachal Pradesh. In which year was the qualification that a person should be an elector in the state from which he is contesting for the Rajya Sabha seat? Done away with. In which year did they remove the qualification that a person should be an elector in the state from which he is contesting a Rajya Sabha seat?
sorry, your time is up. Teams on the buzzers now. Nobody wants to take a chance. The year is 2003. 2003 is the right answer. Let me go to the team from Jammu and Kashmir. A notice to impeach the president may be made by either house, Lok Sabha or the Rajya Sabha. What proportion of the members of the house or what percentage of the members of the house are required to sign the notice for impeachment of the president? Two-third majority. Not a two-third majority. Can we have teams in the buzzers now? The team from Haryana has pressed the buzzer. One-fourth. One-fourth or ek chutai sadasyo ki is correct. 25%, 10 points to the team from Haryana for the right answer. Next question is for the team from Punjab. This East African country has the highest number of women in the national parliament. 38.5 in the Senate or their upper house and 61% in the lower house of parliament. You will see a map of the country. Which country is this? It's in East Africa. Highest number of women in the national legislature. Which country has the highest number of women, up to 61% female, in the lower house of their parliament? No? Teams on the buzzers? Now. Team from Uttarakhand. Rus. Rus is not the right answer. Galat jawab hai. This is Rwanda in East Africa which has the highest proportion of female MPs in its national parliament. But the next question comes to you, Team Uttarakhand. To give election officers adequate and intense training before the first general election, Election Commission decided to hold a test election on a wide scale all over the country. But they started with one state, where they had the first polling rehearsal on 5th August 1951. Which state was this? They held a test election before holding the actual first election. In which state in India on 5th August 1951? Delhi. Delhi is not the right answer. Teams on the buzzers now. Yes, Himachal Pradesh. Rajasthan. Rajasthan is the right answer. 10 points to the team from Himachal Pradesh. We have opened the account. Well done. Let's move to the team from Chandigarh. Which former Chief Election Commissioner is responsible for forming the guidelines which are followed currently by universities and colleges across India to conduct student body elections? I need the name of a former Chief Election Commissioner of India who created these guidelines to conduct student elections. TN Session. It's not TN Session. Other teams on the buzzers now. Nobody's going for it. It's another famous former Chief Election Commissioner, J.M. Lingdo. Okay, I think other teams also knew that, but nobody gets this one, so we move to the team from Haryana. This word comes from Greek. It's actually an English word, but it comes from Greek, which means affair of the cities things that happen in cities. It is used to refer to the process of group decision-making and achieving and exercising positions of governance. What is this word in English? Original word comes from Greek, which means affairs of the cities. Talks about group decision-making and how to achieve governance. It's a word that we have all heard in English and we have all used several times. Administration. Administration is a good guess, but not the right answer. Teams on the buzzer now. <laughs> Team from Himachal Pradesh. Democracy. Not democracy, which is also a very good word because it comes from a Greek word. But the right answer is a word that we've all heard several times, politics. The Greek word for city is polis. And from that, you get the word politics. Minus five to the team from Himachal Pradesh. But you get the next question. George Baker is his name, 
He has held a seat in the Lok Sabha since 2014. What is so special about his seat? Uh, he was Anglo-Indian. He is Anglo-Indian and he holds one of the two seats that are reserved for Anglo-Indians. Very good answer team from Himachal Pradesh. 10 points to you. And the next question to the team from Jammu and Kashmir. You will see the parliament building of a particular country. I need to know which country's parliament building is this. The reason it's in this quiz is because India has literally built this from scratch and trained everybody who, has, who works in that country's parliament. So India has had a major hand in building this structure. So tell me which country's parliament is this? Think of a country that required India's help to do such a major thing for their new democracy. Nepal. Nepal is not the right answer, even though India has helped significantly with Nepal's democracy. Teams on the buzzers now. Team from Haryana. Afghanistan. Afghanistan is the right answer. 10 points to the team from Haryana. We identified Afghanistan's parliament building correctly. Very well done. We'll take a look at the scores. We have team Uttarakhand on minus five. Team Punjab yet to open their score. Team Chandigarh on 10. Himachal Pradesh on 15. But in a close tie are the team from Haryana and from Jammu and Kashmir with some very good answering on 30. The next question is to the team from Punjab. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 overturned laws called Jim Crow laws in United States of America. These guaranteed which group of people the right to vote freely and openly. The Voting Rights Act in America in 1965 allowed a certain group of people who till then could not vote freely. It allowed them to vote freely and openly in any election. Which group of people in United States of America was this? Women. Not women, but women is a very good answer, but that is not the right answer. Teams on the buzzers now. Team from Chandigarh. Black peoples. Black people or African-American people is correct. 10 points to the team from Chandigarh. Well answered. And we go to the team from Uttarakhand. In the first general elections of 1952, the parties contested for how many seats in total? Totally, how many seats did they contest in the first general election? of hmm. 1952. 360. 360, galat jawab. Teams on the buzzers, now. Team from Jammu and Kashmir has pressed their buzzer and let's hear their answer. 489. 489 is a very precise answer and that is the right answer and that gets you 10 points Jammu and Kashmir. Well done. We move to the team from Chandigarh. There are different forms of registration by type of elector. Which form would you use for registration as a service voter by a member of an armed police force? Armed police force. Form 2. Form 2 is not the right answer. Teams on the buzzers, now. Team from Uttarakhand, what is your right answer? Form 3. Form 3, Apsos, Galat Jawab. The right answer is Form 2A. 2A is the right answer. We'll go to the question for the team from Haryana. In this image, you'll see a celebrity who's casting his vote at a polling booth in Darjeeling in 1957. Who is this very, very famous person casting his vote in Darjeeling? in 1957. He's a very, very famous person. We have all heard of him. No team Haryana. 
Anybody else on the buzzer now? I think 1957 is way before all of you and me were born, but we should all know this answer. This is Sherpa Tenzing Norgay, who along with Sir Edmund Hillary climbed Mount Everest. Yeah. So this is Tenzing Norgay casting his vote at a polling booth in Darjeeling. So at the end of 20 questions, let's take a look at the scores. We have a team from Uttarakhand at minus 10, Punjab on zero, Himachal Pradesh on 15, Chandigarh on 20, Haryana on 30, and slightly ahead is Jammu and Kashmir on 40. We'll now move to a buzzer round, which is open to teams, all teams, on their buzzers. I'll repeat, please press the buzzer only after I say, press your buzzers now. Only after that, or you can get a negative of five points. So if all the teams are ready, we'll start with the buzzer questions with the first one. The 1970 elections for the National Assembly of Pakistan resulted in the Awami League becoming the largest party winning 160 seats. But here's the funny thing. All those seats came from one province only. Which province was that? Press your buzzers now. 1970 elections, all the seats went to the Awami League from one province only. So it looks like nobody's going for the buzzer. Everybody's not willing to risk five points on this. The answer is East Pakistan or what is today Bangladesh. So in 1970, just before the 1971 <coughs> War of Independence of Bangladesh, 160 seats out of 161 seats went to the Awami League, all from the province of East Pakistan. Let's go to the second question. Which president holds the distinction of being the only candidate to be elected to the highest office unopposed? Teams on the buzzers, now. <laughs> Team from Uttarakhand has pressed the buzzer. What is the answer? Neelam Sanjeev Reddy. Neelam Sanjeev Reddy is the right answer and gets Team Uttarakhand 10 points. We move on to the third question of the five question buzzer round. The last Western country to give women the right to vote in elections, this through a referendum in 1971. Which country was this? It's a Western country which gave women the right to vote in 1971. Press your buzzers now. <laughs> Team from Uttarakhand. Pakistan. Pakistan, not a Western country. I'm looking for a country in the West. The correct answer is Switzerland. In 1971, the women in Switzerland got the right to vote in federal elections. So minus five to the team from Uttarakhand. And we'll move on to the next question, which is a true or false question. Election Commission of India is also the authority that conducts the elections to your local panchayat. Team from Jammu and Kashmir, you have pressed the buzzer before I told you to press the buzzer. So unfortunately, I'm sorry, you get a penalty of minus five. Please press the buzzer only after I say press your buzzers now. Okay? So now we have the same question open to all the other teams. Other teams, press your buzzers now. Team from Chandigarh managed to get there. Is this true or false? False. False is the right answer. The election commission of the respective state does this job and that gets you 10 points to the team from Chandigarh. We'll go to the final question of this quiz. Ready on the buzzer, everyone? As of December 1st, 2017, Snehalata Srivastav was Secretary General of the Lok Sabha. What is noteworthy about this? Snehalata Srivastav was the Secretary General of the Lok Sabha. What is noteworthy? Press your buzzers. Now. Looks like no one wants to go on the very last question. There's a clue in her name. And the answer is, she's the first woman to be Secretary General of the Lok Sabha. So nobody gets that. And at the end, let's take a look at the results of all that action. We have Team Uttarakhand on minus five. Team from Punjab at zero. Himachal Pradesh at 15, Chandigarh and Haryana 
a very close tie behind at 30 and Jammu and Kashmir still managing to hold on in spite of that minus 5 in the buzzer round and winning this North Zone. Congratulations with 35 points. Congratulations to all the other teams. You have all played very well and you've got to this stage after defeating over 13 and a half lakh students. So that's an excellent job. Voting in the elections by one and all becomes especially essential in a country as diverse as India to make the democracy a truly participative one. Here, we're trying to build an India where every citizen votes. And with the, with the national elections quiz, it's all about catching them young and preparing them to be the future voters of the country. Our next episode is going to be the grand finale, which we've all been waiting for. Until then, I'm Vikram Joshi, signing off from the National Elections Quiz 2018. And as we've always said, every vote counts.